Section 2.1, conditional statements. A conditional statement is an if-then statement. It's composed of two parts. The first part is the hypothesis. Its symbol is P. The hypothesis is the if part of the statement. It is the part of the statement that is true and is our given information. The conclusion, and its label is Q, the conclusion is the then part of the statement. This is the part that is to be determined. In symbolic terms, this is a conditional. The conditional is written as P with the arrow Q. This is read as if P then Q. So you can see the if part of the statement is my hypothesis, P, and the then part of the statement is my conclusion, Q. On our first example, we want to identify the hypothesis and conclusion. In the first conditional, if the puddle froze overnight, then it was 32 degrees or below. From the previous slide, we know the hypothesis P is the if part of the statement. If the puddle froze overnight represents our hypothesis or P. The then part of the statement is the conclusion Q. It was 32 degrees or below is the conclusion Q. Our next conditional, if you cross the Golden Gate Bridge, then you are in California. From the previous slide again, the hypothesis P is the if part. If you cross the Golden Gate Bridge is P, the hypothesis, the conclusion is going to be, then you were in California, Q. In our next example, they want us to write each statement as a conditional in if-then form. This is an important procedure in a geometry because it helps us clarify a statement. It helps us identify the hypothesis, what is given information and what we can use to solve the problem or prove the problem, which is our conclusion, Q. Our first example, a safe place to keep your money, is in a bank. From this statement, we need to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. Here, a safe place to keep your money is P, the first part of my statement. The ending part, is in a bank, will represent our Q. So when we write this in if-then form, we may have to add words to make this se sentence make sense in an if-then form. For example, I've written, if you want to keep your money safe, then you should keep it in a bank. Here we added specific words to make this phrase make sense in an if-then form. Our next example, we have another statement. A square has four sides. Here, a square is my hypothesis, it's our given information, I have a square, and what I want to prove is that it has four sides. That's our conclusion or what is to be proved, Q. When I write this in if-then form, if the figure is a square, then it has four sides. Notice I still added words to make this statement make sense in an if-then form. Each conditional has a truth value. That means the conditional statement is either true or false. If the statement is true, then for every hypothesis or given information, the conclusion is true. If the conditional is false, all you need to find is one counterexample for which the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. We just have to give one example that makes the statement false. In this example, we want to show that each conditional is false by finding a counterexample. Our first conditional, if you live in Texas, then you live in Houston. P is you live in Texas. That's our given information. Q is we want to prove that you live in Houston. This is false. And our counterexample is you could live in Dallas and still live in Texas. Therefore, this statement is false. You don't have to live in Texas and live in Houston. You can live in some other city in Texas. The second conditional, two supplementary angles form a linear pair. Our given, or our P, our hypothesis, there are two supplementary angles. And our conclusion, what we want to show is true, is form a linear pair. In this example, we have a counterexample. The two angles are not adjacent. Therefore, I could have two angles. 130 degrees and 50 degrees. 
These two angles are supplementary. The sum of them is 180, but they are not a linear pair. One counterexample is all I need to show. I can either write it in words or I can show it as an illustration. In this example, we want to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate each statement. In this conditional, if an angle is 154 degrees, then the angle is an obtuse angle. Here, angle is 154 degrees is P. That is my hypothesis. Then the angle is an obtuse angle is Q, my conclusion. And when I draw a Venn diagram, I place my hypothesis inside the larger circle, which is my conclusion. So my conclusion is the big circle, obtuse angles, and my hypothesis is the 154 degree angle set inside of my conclusion. Again, in this example, they want us to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate each statement. The conditional, dairy cows produce milk, or if we write that in if-then form, if you have a dairy cow, then those cows produce milk, that would tell us that dairy cows is our hypothesis P, and our conclusion, produce milk, is Q. And we know that in a Venn diagram, the largest circle is going to be our conclusion, and inside will be our hypothesis. So in this example, I have the large circle, cows, and inside of that is dairy cows, because there's multiple kinds of cows. The same for the previous example is that obtuse angles can have many measurements that are greater than 90 degrees. So we always have the hypothesis set inside of our conclusion in a Venn diagram. Here, we're given the Venn diagram, and what they want us to do is write a conditional statement based on that diagram. Therefore, we know from the previous examples that play for the Steelers must be our P, our hypothesis, while playing in the NFL is Q, our conclusion. Now that we have our P and Q identified, I can write that as an if-then form in such a way, if you play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, then you play in the NFL. Again, from the illustration, I know that I have my hypothesis and I have my conclusion. Our next slide has us defining the converse of a conditional. The converse switches the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional statement. From a previous slide, we had symbolic terms of a conditional, and here I repeat that. A conditional is P, then Q, of course the arrow means then, and it's read as if P, then Q. When I write the converse of that conditional, all I do is I switch the conclusion and the hypothesis around. And now I have a statement that's read as if Q, then P. As before, we know that conditionals have truth values. Converses also have truth values. And the conditional and the converse don't always need to back, match up. In other words, they both don't have to be true, and they both don't have to be false. One could be true, and one could be false. On this slide, they want us to write the converse of each statement. Determine the truth value of each. Give a counterexample if false. Our first conditional, complementary angles form a right angle. Our P is complementary angles. Our Q form right angles is Q. And we can write that as if P then Q. And when I do, the conditional is written as if two angles are complementary, then they form a right angle. Again, my P, complementary angles, then form a right angle. And I have a truth value to that. And this is false. Two angles may not be adjacent. So I could have two angles that add up to 90. So I could illustrate that as 60 degrees and one as 30 degrees. These are complementary angles, but they do not form a right angle because they are not adjacent. The converse of that statement is to switch my P and Q around. Therefore, the converse would be, if two angles form a right angle, then they are complementary. And I have a truth value to that. 
Here, this is true. If I have a right angle and two angles make up that right angle, then they are complementary. And that has to be true because the original angle is 90 degrees. On this slide, again, they want me to write the converse of each statement, determine the truth value of each, and give a counterexample. I have my conditional. It's already in if-then form. So I know that my P is x equals 3. My Q is x squared equals 9. Therefore, I want to determine a truth value. This is true. When I substitute 3 into x squared, 3 times 3 is 9. Now I want to write the converse. I want to switch my P and Q around to determine the converse. Therefore, the converse is if x squared equals 9, then x equals 3. My truth value is this is false. And if I solve this equation, x squared equals 9, and I take the square root of both sides, then I know x has to equal, when I take the square root, plus or minus 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. But negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. Therefore, I have a conditional that is true and a converse that is false.